Well, good day, everybody. This is Dr. Jacqueline King, CEO and founder of Black Women Empowered. And as you know, we always bring amazing people to you doing amazing things. And of course, today will not disappoint you. You probably remember Mr. Chambers uh, when we actually had him and his partner on talking about their invention, the perfect P-trap. It's been a while. So we're back to talk about it again. So Dave, first of all, let's let's talk about you and 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 your humble beginnings because first of all, I'm good friends with your sister, Michelle, who is also doing the darn thing here in Fort Wayne as city councilwoman at large. But um tell us how you grew up and what made you want to go into the plumbing business or be an entrepreneur. Okay, well, thanks, Dr. Jackie, first of all, for having me. And before we begin, I'd, I'd like to say thank you to all of your followers because your followers have been amazing. With the help of your followers, we are the fan favorite of the Lowe's, of Making It With Lowe's program. And I know, without a doubt, it was all because of you and your fans, your following base. So um, thanks to you guys for that. And uh, to answer your question, oh, wow. So plumbing, plumbing has been a really big part of my life. Um, as a very young child, my dad used to be an insulator, which when they built new homes, you have to go into these frame homes. You have to put insulation in these homes so that, you know, you keep the cold, cold weather out or keep the warm air, I mean, the cold, cool air in, hot air out, whatever it is. But insulation is a big part of new construction. So I used to go with my dad as a kid um, within, into these homes. And I remember these cold days, me sitting in front of the heater, uh, you know, trying to help my dad with this insulation. I'd get all this sticky insulation on me or whatever. So make a long story short, my dad wanted to stop doing the insulation. My grandfather, which is from Fort Wayne, Indiana, where you reside now, Mr. Ed Elkins, had a friend that owned a plumbing company. And he gave my dad, uh, he got my dad a job as a um, helper in the plumbing industry. So this is way back in the late 60s, early 70s. Back then, the plumbing uh, industry was a good old boy, as it is still today, a good old boy uh, you know, uh, network. Um, they only allowed my dad to dig ditches. They allowed him to learn how to plumb. So they used him basically as a laborer. But my dad, as he was digging the ditches, he would cut his eyes to the right to look at what they were doing. Then he would come home and practice what they were doing so he could learn the trade himself. It's pretty so, impressive. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So he was a very driven man. Uh, uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, so my grandfather actually planted the seed within my dad. My dad learned it by sneaking a peek. And as a child, my, my dad, after he learned the trade, he wanted to get us out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. And he moved us to Los Angeles, California mm. back in the early 70s. I think I was like in the third grade or something like that. So anyway, he took the craft that he learned and went out to California and started his own business. I then reluctantly used to go with him uh, from a very young child just to make money on the weekends as a plumber. I mean, plumber's helper, just helping him do various jobs or whatever. So uh, fast forward a little bit as I, you know, continue to do that throughout high school and uh, finally becoming to a young adult. I said, OK, I'm ready. I'm not going out here to be a plumber. I'm gonna do something else because I just felt like, you know, plumbing is not where I wanted to be. So I did various things. I, my, my first job outside of my dad was working and everybody's probably familiar with this big donut on top of a building that's called Randy's Donuts. You've seen it in every movie actually out there that's made in LA, they always use it as a landmark. But that big donut was where I got my first job. I worked it for a while and, uh, you know, I ended up quitting. I didn't get fired, I quit because I just, I don't know, something was wrong with me. <laughs> so then I went and took some other jobs like an air freight. Uh, I did sales. I did all these other things to come back to plumbing. Because before I left to go out into the world of 
working normal jobs where people work every day. My dad says, son, you can go out there. You can do whatever you want to do because you're that kind of guy. He said, but I'll tell you what, if you learn this trade, you'll never have to worry about where you're going to get your next sandwich from. I said, okay. So I did that. I fastly learned as a child or as a young adult that I wasn't very good at taking instructions. <laughs> it was not my favorite thing to do. And I just, and I, I, I got a job. My last job that I worked actually worked was with Hughes Aircraft out in California. And this is what broke the straw. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. I did not go to college. Okay. Uh, and I, I kind of circle back to that as well. But I didn't go to college. And I, I found myself training people to be my boss in Hughes Aircraft. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. Why can't I do this job? That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So they were coming in with these, these, um, this education, these college degrees. And I had to train them how to do my job so they could be my boss. That's right. And sit, right, sit well with me. So. The part I didn't tell you about is even during these times, this was back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, California was heavily infested with drugs, cocaine. Um, Maxine Waters is still fighting that fight today about how the feds came in and just flooded our neighborhoods with these drugs and just kind of messed everything up. Well, I was a victim of that. Not only was I a victim of it, out of five siblings, four of us were victims of the drug trade in Los Angeles or Inglewood, California. Stop, stop right there. When you say you were a victim, what does that mean? That means that I, coming out of high school and as a young adult, I didn't think about having a college career. I thought about having what they so was so called known today as a sack of drugs to sell to people because uh -huh. everybody around me was selling drugs. Everybody had these nice cars. It was, they were living life. They had big pockets of money. And, and that's all, you know, that's what I saw. And that's what we all saw. And then on top of wanting to be successful in that industry, I was also on a slippery slope of doing drugs. Mm. I, mean, I was actually smoking crack at one time. Oh, wow. And I did that for probably um, four years of my life. Um, and, you know, it was just, it was a tough thing, but that's all we knew in Inglewood, California, um, in my circle of friends. So it was either you played sports and tried to go pro, uh, which several didn't make it, and uh, or you sold drugs. And uh, so I, I took the drug route. And uh, again, I, I tell you, God is amazing because I have to tell you, I was the worst dope dealer in the world. <laughs> I mean, man, I could not get traction on selling drugs for anything in the world. So let me just let me just stop you for a minute. I want to announce some of our, our people. Keisha, thank you so much. Share the broadcast, please. Lisa, uh, I think that is uh Fallon. I'm not sure. I'm probably saying it wrong. But um share the broadcast. This is a powerful testimony. And uh before we go on. Uh, a lot of you don't know, on our private network last night, we did uh, Entrepreneurial Secrets with Dr. Matthew Knowles. So we're here with a entrepreneur that came from humble beginnings. And, and, and now, is on the verge, now on the verge of being a millionaire. Uh, and I speak that. I speak that into existence. Because when you win, I win. <laughs> no. <laughs> But but the, the bottom line is that you took your humble beginnings and turned it into something positive. And you weren't the only one in your family to do this. Um, your sisters, I don't know. I know two of them that are doing very well, Michelle and uh, Davida, right? Davida. Davida are doing very well. Um, so... It goes to say that it doesn't matter where you start or how you start, but what matters is where you end up. And anybody can turn their life around if they choose to. So, Dave, I commend you um, on starting from the humble beginnings. And I don't know anything about Inglewood or California or anything like that. Um, 
But um, he hello, Miss Lewis and Ursuline. Oh, Ursuline, I haven't seen you in a long time. Hey, good morning, darling. Um, so basically, you got through that, and what happened? Did you? How did you get back into? Did you move back to Fort Wayne ever, or how, what happened? So, so am I still with? Can you see me? Yes. Okay. So, um, what happened was. Uh, I, I you know I had a I had a, a real moment one night. I found myself um uh walking down the street, I think it was one, two o'clock in the morning, amongst all the zombies that, you know, they say the freaks come out at night. Well, I was out there and I was like, what am I doing here? It's like I woke up, a light came out, I'm like, what am I doing? Am I really here? So uh I woke up the next day and I decided to instantly change my life. Um I, I uh Now was this a God moment? This was a God moment. It definitely was a God moment because I don't, I can't think of anything else that would have pulled me out of the depths of where I was, um, you know, because I always knew that I was better than that. And I, you know, I tell you to have a, a family and, you know, a family that family is everything because if, if your parents instill into your, their kids um, that you guys are all that you have. And you have to always stick together. So through that, I was able to draw strength from my my siblings um, to do better and to get myself in a better situation, in which I did. So I needed to get out of California. So to your point, uh, Dr. Jackie, I did leave. I went to Indy Fort Wayne for a second and, and, and hung out with my grandparents, I think about six months, tried to re re, re get things, try to reestablish my, my drug uh, 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 business in that town and again i failed and um i i just i just couldn't get it going so i said you know what at that time i had my daughter was born i said you know I, this is not for me because i can't make it happen so i'm going to leave that alone and i'm going to do something different and i wanted to make sure that i was on this on, out of not in jail but on the streets because i had a daughter that was born and i wanted to be here for my daughter no matter what so that was definitely a compelling moment for me to to stay within you know within the, the 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 confines of not being a victim of all these drugs and everything else like everybody else turned out in jail and so on and so forth so what happened was i was doing okay um but then when i stopped finally stopped selling drugs i hit very rock bottom i mean my car got repo i didn't have any money i found myself walking the streets trying to find a job and in doing so, it started raining. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, after I couldn't make it in Indiana. And that's when I found myself walking the streets trying to find a job after I hit rock bottom. It started raining, sleeting on me. It was just cold. I couldn't, I was just terrible. It was just the worst. I was at a very low point in my life. So believe it or not, to get out of the weather, I took refuge under a canopy at, guess what? A plumbing company. <laughs> yes, a plumbing company. So while waiting to, uh, trying to wait the weather out, I went inside the plumbing company and I applied for a position as a helper. Um, and I, like I said, this is all divine intervention because I, this is five or six years after I had left the plumbing industry working with my dad. So I'm coming back full circle. Um, so I go in there, I get this job and, uh, you know, I, I, they gave me a job. So I, I'm, I'm very, uh, apprehensive because I didn't think I knew anything about plumbing. Well, guess what? I went in there and got that job. And in two weeks, I displayed enough talent that they put me in my own truck and said, man, this guy's pretty sharp. Um, you know, so. I worked with this company for a while, and then I got more confidence. I started saying, man, I, I learned way more with my dad than I thought I did. Uh, and Because all this stuff that they had me doing was very elementary to me. So, you know, my mind started working. My mind started working. So I'm like, okay, if I can do this, um, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to get my license. So I got to talking to the people at the place about getting my license. It's like, oh, you don't need your license. You can just work for us. Don't worry about it. You got a job here forever. I'm like, okay, well, I already knew about that curveball right there. So I went and got my license, to make a long story short, because I, <clears throat> excuse me, I really have 
uh, an entrepreneurial spirit because I come from an entrepreneurial family, uh, from my grandparents, my dad, and some other people that is, that have their own business and their uh, businesses in our family. So um, fast forward, uh, I, uh, I I've got a job there. They weren't paying me very much. My mom came down with cancer. I had to go back to California because I was the only one available to kind of help take care of her. In doing so, I went back to California. Uh, I got a job out there, and I was making three times as much money in the in, in, that I was making down in Atlanta. I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is better than selling drugs any day of the week. It's like I make way more money doing this. So. Again, the entrepreneurial part of me kicked in. I said, if I'm making this much money for them, I could probably do, you know, way better on my own and make more for us. So I went out on my own, got me this old raggedy truck and kind of went out. And I used to go to Home Depot, stand in the aisles and pass out cars in the plumbing aisles to customers that were trying to find their way through their plumbing projects. And that's kind of how I got started at doing my own thing uh, in the plumbing industry. It's it's a it's an amazing story, yes. and since we are really our business network is so focused on uh, entrepreneurs, and one thing I said last night on our session is that um, you nobody's coming to save us. Right. We have got to learn to do our own thing, and what the other thing that you said was you you actually had a passion for. Plumbing, you had to because it kept coming back. And once you uncover your passion, then your purpose is is revealed. And so then you, it's up to you to walk into your purpose because you already know what you love to do and you know what you're good at. I'm good at social media networking, and I love doing this. And so I've been doing it for 12 years. But that's really a, a crucial point in your life when you realize what your passion is um and and you're not the only one that that has said they don't want to work for anyone i mean i managed to i don't even know how with the grace of god get through almost 26 years of corporate america <clears throat> which is i need to write a book about that one but um yeah i get it so now you started your own company and how did you come up um, with this this uh, amazing device. Yeah, so all my years in, uh, in the service industry, one of the things uh, that we would get a lot of calls for were calls where people have stoppages in their, in their sink or they drop something down the sink. Uh, and, and, and these two things were to me, pretty costly uh, uh, calls. I mean, they're simple solutions, but you know, it, it's kind of hard to charge people, you know, a couple hundred bucks to go in and be in their house for 15 minutes, and it was just so simple, you know, to address. But there was one in particular uh, situation where um, we got called out to a lady's house that had dropped a uh, 70, 80 year old uh, uh, old uh, heirloom earring. It was like a three carat diamond earring down her drain. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, we we had all the modern tools and, you know, we had cameras and we cut open walls and we did all these different things to try to, to save this uh, or find or locate this earring to no avail. So then we still had because we spent a whole day there, a whole team of guys. So we ended up still charging her, you know, a couple thousand dollars <laughs> you know, so to add insult to her injury. I mean, her loss. So, you know, at, it just weighs so heavy on me. I'm like, you know, this has got to be a way. This is something that's just like ridiculous for people to have to lose things down the drain and, you know, pay us to come out and try to get them. It's just a lose-lose situation. So um, I came home that night. I, I was feeling kind of heavy about it. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, literally, I literally went to sleep and I woke up the next day with this perfect P-trap on my mind. It was like, wow. If I just drop, if you drop something down the drain and we drop it down below the flow of water, it has no chance of washing out into the sewer system, which at that point it becomes a lost cause. So I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this. The next day, I actually contacted a friend of mine that uh, was is an engineer uh, at uh, Georgia Tech, and I put this 
amazing uh, uh, thought on paper. I went from paper to a, um, uh, 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 what's it called when you go and uh, have a uh, prototype made from a, a printer? What's that printer called? It's a. Uh, you know, I don't know. Okay. Well, it's, it's they, what, they have these printers that, that actually uh, make plastics and they can take, you can put the cat um, information in and it'll print out. So I, make a long story short, I had a cat, I had a, um, a prototype made of what this, this particular product was going to look like. And it just kind of snowballed from there. So it took me about three and a half, four years, believe it or not, to from the time I dreamt of this product to the time I actually had a real product in my hand, uh, uh, which is uh, everything just kind of happens when it's supposed to. So by the time I finished with it, Lowe's came out with that uh, uh, um, uh, program and uh, my business partner entered it into uh, the program. And amongst 20, 2,000 and something other participants, we actually won the fan favorite. So we also did a home show just to kind of get um, validation from the public. And when we introduced it to the public, it was like we had crowds of people around our table. Like, what is this? And, and, and oh, wow, what took so long for something like this to be designed or to come up with? So it was like we were selling something that was new and, and every, all the other vendors were like what are you guys doing you got a lot of people around your table what's what's going on so everybody loved it that was kind of the validity that we needed to we was like, okay we got a good viable product here so that's when we really went to work on it and and that's where we are here today so let me ask you um and um frida says the 3d printer is that what you're trying that's to say right. thank you frida thank you frida <laughs> that's actually what it is a 3d we have the best fans and followers oh, in goodness. the world they really are they're really engaging. Um, please share the broadcast. So let me just say, um, this. So this device actually has a wall up to keep it from going to the sewer. Is that right? Okay. So let me explain to you guys first of all what a P trap is and what it does. The P trap is that little U shaped thing under your sink, and every sink, kitchen sink bathroom sink, whatever, break room sink, whatever sink is tied, any sink that's tied into the, the local sewer system has to have it. What that trap does is it keeps a level of water inside. It's a water seal. That seal is so that sewer gases don't come back up into your hole. If you have a, a pipe this pipe directly to your sewer system, you will be ran out of your house because the sewer smells will be so bad and they're actually toxic and they could actually be a uh, very, uh, a big health threat to you. So this is cold. This is why you have to have this on your sink. Um, it only holds like about a cup of water, like I said, so it creates a seal to sort of the gases can't come back in. So what I did, so what happens is gravity, when it's kind of designed as water goes down, gravity kind of takes it and kind of, cleans anything out supposed to in that actual trap it kind of ciphers out and works on gravity so that's why when you drop something down the sink if water's running or you run some water it will wash out into the actual sewer system so i decided or within my vision was to make a lower department in that trap so that if something falls down there it'll fall into that lower portion of the trap and it won't, and it takes it out of the flow of water so that it doesn't wash out into your system. So it was designed, believe it or not, to, just for that, just to catch something that may go down the drain. But after looking at it and thinking more about it, there was even more benefits to it. The benefit of it was, first, the first one was you won't lose anything down the drain. The second one is, if you get a stoppage, you no longer need to use harsh chemicals like liquid plumber, if I can say that, and other harsh chemicals. I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, other harsh chemicals that are, are not uh, conducive to our environment, you avoid that. The biggest thing is you avoid, you avoid me, the plumber, from having to come out to take something from your drain or um, uh, remove a stoppage that you may have because as you can see with it there is a trap door at the bottom that has a wing nut at the bottom 
And and, and keep in mind, everybody. You Wait a minute, Dave. Do you have one on hand that you can show? I know you have to. I, I do. Don't tell me uh, you don't. I do. I can go get it. But wait a minute. I want before you do that. How much? How much do you charge if you have to come out and and do? That? I know you charged the lady two thousand dollars and you couldn't fix it. But what's the average cost? The if average you cost to come out and remove a stoppage or a P trap is it starts at around one hundred and eighty five dollars just to get out there. That's just a that's just a service call. That's just a service call. And within that service call, we can take your trap loose if there's a stoppage in there, we can remove it or whatever. Uh, you know, so uh, but yeah, that's that's what it costs. And 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 per hour, if how long it takes, what do you average like what do plumbers average an hour? So so basically our cost of doing business has dictated that we need to charge two eighty five an hour. Mm. But the service industry is fastly getting away from hourly charges. And they've come up with what they call the flat rate. So they usually come out, look at your project, and then give you a flat rate to do that particular job. Uh, and if there's any variables, they kind of warn you prior to if A doesn't work and we have to go to B, then it may cost this much. So that's kind of how the industry has evolved into in the pricing uh, industry. But it's but, still it's still costly. And this yes, device, uh, this device costs what? This device costs twenty dollars, nineteen ninety-five. And let me tell you, 1995 spent one time on each sink is cheaper than me coming out to service one one sink. This is an investment that you make one time, and it lasts you for the rest of your time because it's plastic. And of course, we know plastic is not biodegradable, so it lasts forever, which is why most of the plumbing pipes and fixtures are going to plastic. Um, but yeah, so it's like buying insurance. You don't need it until you need it. And the good thing about it, like I said, anybody can do it. You don't have to have any tools. You don't have to take your tubular system apart. You just take that wing nut apart at the bottom, retrieve your product, or we, it also comes with a cleaning wand. If there's stoppage in there. You can just clean it out. You just have, it just takes a little small bucket to catch a little bit of water that's in there. Uh, and then you take it and remove whatever it is or retrieve whatever you need to do and put it back in place, the trap door, and put the wing net back on, and you're done. You eliminated me. You eliminated the harsh chemicals. You eliminated losing anything down the drain. It just became such a, a remarkable product that had way more um, way, way more advan- or, or uh, uh, pluses to it than, than I thought in the beginning. So, I mean, like I said, it's, it's buying insurance. You never know when you're going to need it. You only need it when you need it. But to have it, it's like an upgrade to your system. And this is not something I will I will not take the credit of thinking of how to solve the problem of things falling down the drain. And I say that because during our patent searches for uh, P-traps, we found probably 15 to 20 different P-traps that people had put patents on that were just way overthought. They did just way too much for it. They wouldn't pass code. They had all these contraptions with screens in them and blah, 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 everything. Nobody thought just to do something as simple as drop the items out of the flow of water. So I came up with that. It's a great idea. People love it. It's insurance that you must have. I mean, and it's definitely going to be the new norm going forward. Whether I'll be around uh, 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 long enough to see it, but believe me, it's something that is going to be the new norm. Oh, and- you'll be around. Um, <laughs> can you, uh, I want you to get one, and I'm going to talk to the people for a minute. Hold Go on. Get, get one. Um, so the the reason that we're doing this is twofold. We're, we're really trying to get entrepreneurs, if you have an entrepreneurial mindset, if you have an idea, one thing I always say is God doesn't give you a vision without provision. That's one of my favorite quotes. If he gave you that vision, he will provide a means for you to carry through that vision if you're willing to do the work. One of the things Dr. Knowles said last night on our uh, masterclass is that a lot of entrepreneurs fail because they don't want to put the work in. Um, I'm up every day early 
early and and then you know I work all day consistently and if you, any of you know I retired I retired from the electric company uh ooh, I don't even know how many in 2004 I believe it was and but I am so committed to BWE and making sure that you all are encouraged uplifted inspired have resources that's why we created um, Black Women Empowered Business Network. You see it going across the bottom screen. Go over there, check us out, join, because we have um, experts from all over that are going to help you get to where you need to be. But the other thing is that Dave is um, has has followed his dream and his passion. So what we're what we're trying, we're going to the next level. You guys helped us with the vote getting. And now we're getting ready to go to the next level. This, these are two black men, and um, you know, not to take away from anyone else, but the reality is this. And I know because I spent uh, almost twenty six years in corporate America. Black men take a hard hit in corporate America and in life. It's just what it is. You can't. You can. You can act like it doesn't exist, but I saw it myself firsthand, and so. We as women, which is 95% of our audience, we have to be committed to uplifting our brothers, encouraging our brothers, and helping our brothers get there. Because you're always complaining, you know, ain't no good men, the men are in jail. I mean, this is this is facts. This is what we say. But God gave us um, a little bit more favor over the men in society. I'm not going to say all of it, but we do. So what's wrong with reaching out and helping our men? These are our men succeed. Dave and his partner, they're, they're hard workers. They're not asking for a handout. They're asking for you to go and buy the product less than $20. Okay, go ahead. Show it, bring it up. Yeah. So this is the, this is the product that you will see in the stores that are listed on the website today this is the box okay um and i will take the product out here so you can see it itself um this is it okay so this is what you'll see you see how you have the j shape here this that's the norm under your sink and i added this portion of it, the lower portion so when something falls down your sink it drops down to here Okay, this, if you can see that, can you see that? Mm -hmm. That is the wing nut that I'm telling you that all you have to do is take that wing nut off, drop it, retrieve your product, push it back up, put the wing nut back on it as such, and you've got a resealed trap, you retrieved your item, you removed. Here's the cleaning wand that if something happens, you can go into the bottom and clean it out. No problem. And reattach it to the side if you want to. I mean, it's a phenomenal product, you know. And all this is, so this would be coming down from your sink. And this is where it turns and goes outside to your plumbing system. You no longer have to disassemble all of that. You just take, keep it in place, take that down, and retrieve or clean your product, period. And that that's that's really amazing because we know uh, that a lot of the sisters uh, be getting those weaves and stuff and yeah, yeah. and the hair be falling in the sink right right and, and it clogs up the drain and it does. I mean I'm just being real right uh, so you open this, that up this is the other product that we're working on now it's a transparent one. Okay, so you can see what's in there. Yes, you can see what's in it. This is our next product that's coming out. Um, it, you can see what's in it. You can see when it's time to service your product, uh, your, your, your trap. Um, there's no mysteries to it. But right now, this is what we're dealing with. And, 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 and it's so important for your support because, unfortunately, Lowe's has not, has not just said, you're in permanently. They're giving us. A Wait a minute. We haven't even we haven't even got to Lowe's yet. You can't oh. you can't go there. You you're jumping. Uh, oh. Let me just say, uh, <laughs> Keisha said this is so funny to me because I was having plumbing issues last night and felt incompetent. I'm going to put it on the screen. I think I can do that. 
There, there's her. Her. Can you see her comment? I cannot. I, I lost. You. I don't know why. I didn't. Uh, anything okay. So, um, she said that she felt incompetent. Competent. She glad. She's glad that she caught the live today. Well, we're glad you did too. Uh, we hope that you're going to share. Everybody needs to share this because we're going to talk about um, how uh, you got into Lowe's and what we need to do now. Right. Yeah. So, um, well, first of all, this ladies, believe it or not, is designed for you because you are the ones that get dressed over the sinks and drop things down the sink, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, don't act like men don't get dressed over oh, the sink. Oh, we do, but I'm saying 95% of our calls. I'm, I'm just teasing you. Yeah, no, come from ladies that have dropped something down the sink. Okay, basically. So, and it's, a, it's, a, it's not a problem. Because especially now, since we've got a solution for you, but to to, to your question, um, like I said, we we uh, Lowe's did a partnership with uh, Damon Johns from Shark Tank, and they wanted to uh, do something for uh, uh, people that were not in uh, positions to do work for or do work with big box stores. Big box stores are probably the hardest thing for just the, the normal person to get in because of expense, because of uh, just, I mean, it, it's just such a big machine that it's, it's again, a good old boy system. And you find one company that has several products once they've actually kicked down the door and, and, and gotten into a big box. Um, it's a very, very competitive market. Um, you know, so by them putting that program together, we 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 didn't think that we didn't think anything of it. We just entered our product just to see what would happen. And like I said, it was over 20, 22 or something hundred participants throughout the United States as well as Canada, uh, and participating in this pro in this uh, contest. And uh, uh, you know, we we won the fan favor. And again, like I said, we. We 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 went kept going step by step. Then we won. We got to the next level. We won, and I didn't, I wasn't thinking anything of it. And then we got down to the final sixteen out of over two thousand participants. I was like, "What?" I mean, favor, what? favor. Yeah, right. I'm like, this is amazing. So, um, and then uh, once we got, we and then we moved on from the final sixteen down to the final six, and that was like everything. That was all the validity that we needed to say, hey, we've really got a real good product here. And we were getting from some of the lows, higher uppers that they love our product. They think it's a great product. But then still, the challenge was um, for us to get a, a good solid product, which was definitely a, a huge task where I kept having technical difficulties. I kept having uh, uh, manufacturing difficulties. Uh, there's so many things that go into it, but we weathered the storm. We stayed in it. I fought, and uh, we finally came up, you know, with a viable product, a product that I believe in and I feel like would be really would serve you really well in your homes. But like I said, this is something that's only momentary. It's not promised for me to be in Lowe's forever. In fact, we've only got until mid September, I believe it is, to prove. And these 156 stores that we're in is worthy of being in big box. And that's where you all come in. That man, I'm saying. So go ahead and tell them what they need to do, Dave. So, um, Jackie, I think you have, uh, I sent you a list that is an actual list that's not on the website of all the different stores. Do you have that? I don't have it in, in my hand, but if they go to any of our sites, um, it's it's listed there. Right. So so the the list of stores that we actually have parts in right now, and you'll see, like I said, I'll go back to this box. You'll see this box is actually sitting on a stand in the aisle in the plumbing section. Um, if if there's no if there is no store within the areas that you live in, look at the areas that are on there, and you may have friends or family members that are in those areas, and if if, if at all they could go and make that small insurance investment uh, because it's a win-win situation. You're getting a great product. Um, that would be so great because if we get into Lowe's for a year, then we get the right to be in all 2,200 stores as opposed to just 156 stores. 
at that point, now we're building a foundation. The foundation to whereas we are in Lowe's so that anybody else that we have uh, in our circle that may have a product that we could introduce to Lowe's, well, guess what? We've got our foot in the door so we can say, hey, this product, you know, of, of other people of color that, you know, that, that need, because starting off in big box is almost unheard of. It doesn't happen. It's, it's something that is a, another, to me, divine intervention. It's just more validity. Let me know this is this is something that will become the new norm because of all the different uh, positive things that have happened along this road to get to where we are today. Um, so, I'm, Dave, can they go to your website and get the store list too? Right? They can do that. They can. Um, it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's 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 not. You, you can't you, you have to kind of scroll down you'll see it, it'll say in it'll say store locations i think on the website you can click on that and then you can just kind of scroll down and you'll see the different cities but and then you also got that sheet that i gave you that has them all on there as well so you can look at it that way so it's i mean they're they're spread out from i saw them as far as san antonio texas all the way down through louisiana all the way down through uh well give you what's your website it's uh it's a uh, perfect ptrap.com p-e-r-f-e-c-t t-r-a-p dot com perfect ptrap.com and that should pop up um we're also in amazon on amazon now um if you just don't have a store and you just want to support us you can go to amazon as well and search for the perfect ptrap um uh and that that doesn't count like it does in the Lowe's stores because that's that's um, independent of Lowe's. But like I said, our main objective is for us to be able to sustain uh, a spot on the shelf in, in, in Lowe's from now on uh, going forward. Uh, so, yeah, any any anything that you guys can do to help us would be greatly appreciated. Well, I just typed uh, the perfect P trap dot com and on all of the different channels. So. Well, Perfectpeatrap.com for the website. That's what I did. Oh, perfect. Um, so they can go to your website and look for the stores. Yeah. Um, and like um, Dave says, if if it's not in your area, you can always go and and order it. You know, through the website. On, so on, Dave, um, yes, I commend you. I'm proud of you because I'm Thank like, you. I'm. I know you guys always say everybody's my family, but. We're really like family, yeah. um, Dave yeah. and I. He he's like my little brother, um, because I I I moved to uh, Indiana and I really didn't have any family. I still don't have any blood family here. And his sister Michelle, a uh, Chamber City uh, Councilwoman at large, took me in as a family member, and uh, and so they can't get rid of me now. They I don't care if they wanted to, Absolutely. but. Uh, <laughs> but anyway we really want to thank all of you for tuning in you know it's the middle of the day we'll be re-airing this um as well but if you can do us that favor and at least go to the website see if your location is there and if not you can still buy it get it online because you do need this in your home everyone needs it in their homes on all of their sinks and dave on closing words what do you have so I, I would say, once again, I thank you so much, all of you, for participating in the previous uh, uh, voting uh, 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 segment of this this movement. And uh, you guys are definitely responsible for uh, uh, us being in this position. Uh, please try to look at this product as a, a, a an investment in your home. It's insurance. A one time. This is the only insurance that you will spend one time in order to be in a safe place in your sinks um and, and and please just you know just if you can just please try to help us move forward so that we can open the door for others that may uh, uh have ideas uh if you have ideas and, and and dr jackie also i don't have a problem with talking with any of these ladies if they want to contact me about our 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 uh uh, uh process of getting into lows or how we went about it because some of these 
people or women that are listening may have ideas of their own that they're thinking about. And I, any knowledge that I've obtained along the way, I'm more than willing to share. So make sure that they're able to get in touch with me via email or whatever. I, I'm, I'm always open. And I always answer my phone 24 seven. So it's not a problem. I will, um, I will post your email. Um, let's see. Paulette says, do you do demos at locations? Demos. Uh, well, there's a demo on the website as to how the product is installed and how it actually works and also um i will do whatever needs to be done if, she, if they need me to come and do a demo somewhere yes i can do that to answer her question and you know i was thinking dave you might want to start reaching out to some of the churches uh to see if you can do a demo for their audience, I mean, you're in you're in a big place. There's a, a good, probably a church on every every corner, right? Yes, there is. There is. There, there's so many. We have a, a a whole lot to do. And, and as I said, once the product was done and we got into Lowe's, that's when the hard work begins. So uh, we are um, in the process of doing an infomercial. So you guys will probably see us uh, on. Uh, some infomercial somewhere on TV, somehow, some way, here probably in the next couple months. Uh, uh, so make sure uh, when you see it, you you already know, oh, there's the perfect feet trap. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> still at it. So uh, anything you guys can do, like I said, once again, to help would be greatly appreciated. Appreciate well, Dave, this has been um, a great um, interview, great broadcast. And we'll be we'll be re-airing it because I know some people were at work, but it still stays on our sites forever. That's really how you manage to get the votes because even though um, you know it might not look like a lot of people are tuning in, they come back. They come back later. They come back, and that's the beauty of these broadcasts. They're on demand, so they can go back at any time. We can share it as much. We can rebroadcast it. All of that. So thank you very much, Dave, for coming on. And everyone, uh, the women, please go check out bwebusinessnetwork.com. That's what we do. Um, we help you get to where you want to. We have attorneys. We have real estate. We have uh, financial. We have a, a, uni a financial university uh, academy or something like that, that where you can actually go on and, um, you know, get tips on how to invest, how to save. Dr. Knowles been on talking about how to even get started. A lot of people don't even know what it takes to start a business. It is not like just that simple. You got an idea. There's a whole bunch of trademarks and mm. business plans. And you know, Dave, all of that Absolutely. stuff you have to take into um, consideration. So uh, if you're serious about it, you really do need to join the network, bwebusinessnetwork.com. And uh, we do live masterclass. I might even have uh, Dave come on and do a masterclass on plumbing. That would be great. I will do that anytime. And thank you, Dr. Jack, for all the amazing things that you continue to do. I mean, you are such a, a jewel to the community. Uh, and we, we just pray that you're able to continue to do what uh, what you do because you do it so well. So thank you for that. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. And we will see you the next time. Until then, God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.